Before we begin our worship this morning, just a, a few quick announcements. Um, Christmas Eve service, we have two worship times, 4.30 and 7. The 4.30 is currently filled to capacity. We're only allowed to have 100 people, according to the COVID government guidelines. There's still space at the 7. But as with all services, we do have to register uh, to come to any worship service, including Christmas Eve. We're not allowed to accept walk-ins. Tonight at 7 o'clock, we have our annual Tree of Memories uh, service. Uh, we will be streaming all these services live online, of course. If you can't make it Christmas Eve or any other time, we will do that as well. Tonight, of course, we'll be streaming as well. Uh, service tonight is going to be pretty well similar to last year, except there will be some special instructions about lighting the tree and the bulbs. This morning's service, usually the service we all look forward to because, of course, we do a lot of singing, a lot of uh, familiar carols and Christmas songs. This year, we're not allowed to sing them as a congregation. And so we have several people who've uh, volunteered to do some singing for us, and we certainly look forward uh, to their singing. Uh, there are words in here uh, when the organist plays uh, to fill in between when we're decorating, depending on what that decoration is. We won't be singing those hymns as congregational hymns, and we can hum along as they play a couple of verses as we decorate during those hymns. The only one we're allowed to sing is the last one. And so save your voices for the last one, joy to the world. And we'll begin in just a few moments. Also just to remind you, I guess, of COVID regulations, that you're going to notice us changing plastic bags and mics. And the reason for that is, is under COVID regulations, if a person outside of the bubble uses a microphone, and the same microphone is used by the next person, not in that bubble, with the way we have to deal with it is we've changed and put a plastic bag on the microphone. And so right now I'm going to put one on here, and then when the singer changes up, we'll change that bag. So if you want to know what we're doing, we have a new title now, Bag Changer. And so uh, if you're really good, we might let you do that one sometime. So we'll begin in just a few moments. It is complicated. you got to get that bag of prayer. Prayer at one time. We will now begin, and, and Sue will sing us the first selection, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Oh, 
Jesus Christ, to our time of worship and celebration this morning, Advent 4, means we're getting very close to the celebration of Christmas. And this morning's liturgy is the hanging of the greens. In theory, it's when we all get together as a church family to, to sing and prepare ourselves to celebrate Christmas and also to prepare our holy space by decorating. I'd like to thank uh, Tracy for leading up the service this morning and also for all participants as we make this a time of celebration. How can we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus the King? How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus the Eternal Christ? How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus our Savior? How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus, the Son of God? By hearing the words of the prophets, for the Lord's saving word of God. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. God of manger and star, let us enter your story once again and find ourselves kneeling with the shepherds, singing with the angels and worshiping with the magi. Touch our hearts with the wonder of birth and the depths of your love. Speak to us in word and song and lift us to the realms of glory. Amen. Now continue with the lighting of the Advent wreath. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of Love. He is God's perfect love in human form. Those who believe in Him and live in Him live in love. Love transforms and perfects all things. It never ends. We thank God for hope he gives us, for the peace he bestows, for the joy he pours into our hearts, and for the love that he redeems us and shows us the way. O oh God of love, Emmanuel, send your light into our hearts at this time. Help us to be ready for the time of Christ appearing. Grant that we may so dwell in him that his perfect love fills our entire being. Make our worship a time in which we celebrate your love and are made ready to show that love to the whole world, both today and forevermore. Ah, you may be seated as we continue with our celebration. 
and we can remain seated until uh, instructed otherwise pretty well by the time of the prayer of intercession. The meaning of the sermon. When John the Baptist was asked who he was, he replied, I am the voice shouting in the desert. Prepare, prepare the way of God. Dear friends, we gather here to prepare a place for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Spiritually, we make a place for Christ's birth in our hearts. We decorate our homes and communities in preparation to celebrate this wonderful gift from God. And we prepare our house of worship for his coming, dressing it in beautiful apparel, just as we would for the visit of an earthly monarch. God does not live in temples made by human hands, but God knows that we need them in order to focus our worship. Nor does God require a fine place for the birth of the Holy Child. A manger in a stable is sufficient. But God accepts with pleasure the love and devotion to show and preparate and preparing a place fitting for our Savior's birth. But let us remember that just as John was not the light, he came to proclaim the light that all might believe. So we do not celebrate the birth in these preparations, but in, in them we point the way. These symbols are Advent signs of Christ's coming. Let us then make ready this house of God together, to be calling and our children to be taught them, and let us joyfully anticipate the nativity of our Christ to the glory of God. Amen.
the holly garland, God promises eternal life. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Background to the holly. Holly is evergreen, a symbol of eternal life obtained through Christ Jesus who shed his blood as symbolized by the red berries and thorns, that we might have life. Life is and red berries, but God also gives us a feeling of happiness, of being alive, of being green. Poinsettia, God's people will blossom with life. A reading from Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Background to the poinsettia. It has red leaves, the red again a symbol of Christ's blood, which gives us life, symbolized by the green leaves. The poinsettia, a Christmas flower, reminds us that Christ is like a flower, which will bloom in the desert, uh, which will bloom in the desert. The desert may refer to the waiting of Advent and to our human situation, when God comes at Christmas. The story of the poinsettia is that a Mexican girl was going to church on Christmas, but had no gift to bring. She knelt down and wept because of her poverty, and from her tears sprung the poinsettia.
The read God promises to surround us with love. A reading from Hosea. I will heal their disloyalty. I will love them freely, for my anger has turned from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the forests of Lebanon. His shoots shall spread out. His beauty shall be like the olive tree, and his fragrance like that of Lebanon. They shall live again. They shall again live beneath my shadow. They shall flourish as a garden. They shall blossom like the vine. Their fragrance shall be like the wine of Lebanon. O Ephraim, what have I to do with idols? It is I who answer and look after you. I am like an evergreen cypress. Your faithfulness comes from me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Background to the wreath. The wreath is made of evergreens, a symbol of eternal life which Christ is coming at Christmas to bring. The circle suggests the everlasting covenant God makes with us and also the love of God which encircles us and holds us close, like we hold a baby, like Mary held her infant. The mistletoe God promises a peaceful ruler. A reading from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of the donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Background to the mistletoe. Mistletoe has no root and no seeds. Its propagation is a mystery, like the mystery of God's love and God's presence with us in an infant. Where the mistletoe hung was a place to meet in peace, to exchange the kiss of peace, not merely the romantic variety.
Christmas tree, God promises to beauty his church, beautify his church. A reading from Isaiah. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain, and the pine, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will glorify where my feet rest. The descendants of those who oppressed you shall be shall come bending low to you, and all of those and all who despise you shall bow down to your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated with no one passing through, I will make you majestic forever, a joy from age to age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The background to the tree. The psalmist, like Isaiah, also speak of being planted like a tree by the waters. It reminds us of the waiting, of being patient for God's coming. It reminds us to be steadfast, some of the ancient, ancient people of Europe worshipped at sacred trees. Christian missionaries encouraged them to keep their devotion using the trees, but to change their focus to create a, a Christian tradition. Christmas tree, your oh Christmas tree, your leaves are slowly changing. Oh Christmas tree, your oh Christmas tree, your leaves are so unchanging. Not only green when summer's here, but also good it's cold and drear. Oh Christmas tree, your oh Christmas tree. Your leaves are so unchanging. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, your candles shine so brightly. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, your candles shine so brightly. From base to summer, gay and bright, there's only splendor for the sight. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, your candles shine so brightly. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how richly God has decked you. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how richly God has decked you. You bid us true and faithful be, and trust in God unchangingly. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, how richly God has decked you. Candles and the lights, God's promise to give light. 
A reading from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and the thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, the kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Meth. Medrin and Ethran, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Thank the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Background to the lights. The lighting of candles has been a part of the religious worship for centuries. The Hebrews burned candles for eight days as a part of the festival of lights. Now called Light has also been used by many religious groups to symbolize truth of Christ's life for us. When Joseph and Mary presented Jesus in the temple, Simon referred to the Christ child as a light to light the Gentiles. From this statement, church leaders have used candles to symbolize the light of Christ shining throughout the world. God promises a Savior, a reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Background to the angels. The word angel comes from the Greek word meaning messenger. An angel communicates news from God to the people. Angels appeared to both Mary and Joseph, bringing the news that Mary would give birth to Jesus. Angels also appeared to the shepherds in the fields to announce Jesus' birth. The Candy Cane, a reading from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, staff they comfort me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Being afflicted with the sweet tooth, almost obvious selection for this can, uh, story, the background to the candy cane. A long time ago in the United States of America, there lived a candy maker. And this candy maker wanted to make a special candy for Christmas, a candy would, that would make people think about Jesus. He made his candy cane white, because white is the color of Christmas, and white is the color of newborn babies when they are christened. Jesus was a newborn baby at Christmas. The candy maker made his candy cane hard as a rock, because Jesus is the rock of ages. The candy maker shaped his candy like the letter J, because J is the first letter of Jesus' name. And if you hold it upside down, it looks like a shepherd's staff. Jesus is the good shepherd. A shepherd uses his staff to hook around the leg of a sheep if it falls into a ditch or to pull it back safely if it gets too close to the edge of a cliff. 
Lastly, the candy maker added some stripes to his candy cane to remind how Jesus was beaten by the soldiers. As the Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. stand for the blessing and the intercessions. Bless, O oh God, these gifts of the earth and the work of faithful hands, which has beautified this place and furnished it in preparation for the celebration of the birth of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that in these earthly things we may behold the order and beauty of heavenly things. Amen. Surrounded by warmth and love, let us remember those who struggle in a cold and violent world. The lights, O God, remind us of Christ, who comes to be the light of the world. May we, your church, provide light to the world. O God, the mistletoe reminds us of the peace Christ brings. East and west, north and south, meet in unity and understanding. The poinsettia reminds us that you will restore the earth as a garden of paradise. May we be true caretakers of the earth's bounty. The tree, O oh God, reminds us of the tree Christ died on, that we might live. May our community of faith give life and love to those in need around us. O oh God, the garland reminds us of hope and joy you give in the midst of sorrow and pain. May those in any kind of pain or trouble experience your presence incarnate in us. The wreath reminds us of your promise of eternal life. May we, like those who have gone before us, remain in the circle of your love. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are able to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We pray over our gifts this morning. We pray together. Gracious God, by the power of the Spirit who sanctifies the mother of your Son, make holy all that we offer you this day. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. May you be patient of the Lord's coming as the farmer who waits for the fruits of the earth. 
May your hearts be filled with strength for the coming of the Lord drawing near. May you be at peace with one another and with all people because of one who comes in God's name stands at the door. We're now able to use our voices. Joy to the world.